Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jubash from Total Health and Wellness Center. What I want to go over in this video, I just want to go over the six patterns of why you have a low functioning thyroid. Now, 90% of low thyroid function, the patients do have Hashimoto's disease. So Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system is attacking the thyroid gland. It's attacking its own tissue. So 90% have an autoimmune. But I want to go over six primary patterns. To begin with the first one, primary hypothyroidism. This is the true dysfunction of the thyroid gland. So this is actually something that's wrong with the thyroid gland in itself. So when you do get blood work done, this is when the results have elevated thyroid stimulating hormone results. And this is where the doctors will prescribe medications because of, again, increased TSH count. This is primary hypothyroidism. Something's wrong with your gland. The second pattern is primary pituitary but secondary hypothyroid. This is where the pituitary gland is fatigued. Now the pituitary gland is a master gland that actually sends a signal down to the thyroid gland to produce its hormones. So this is a little bit north of the thyroid gland in of itself, and this is the pituitary gland. So this is called primary pituitary secondary hypothyroid. Third pattern I look at, I look at thyroid underconversion. Now how the thyroid hormone works is that it's, it's produced in the thyroid gland in the form of T4. It's converted from T4 to active T3 in three places, 60% in the liver, 20% in the gut, and 20% in the target tissue. So if there is somewhere in the conversion from inactive T4 to active T3 due to anywhere from having a leaky gut, increased cortisol with inflammation, that will, that will lower the conversion factor from T4 to T3. So next we got the immune system. The immune system, you look at Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. Hashimoto's is when you have a combination of hyperthyroid symptoms and hypothyroid symptoms. Graves' disease is hyperthyroidism. So what they are, they're, that is, they're, again, it's an autoimmune disease in which the immune system is attacking the thyroid gland itself. So this is where in blood work, in the blood work results, where I test for, I want to test for, I'm looking for thyroid peroxidase and thyroid globulin antibodies. So if those two indicators come back positive, the reason why you have hyperthyroid symptoms or hypothyroid symptoms is because you have an autoimmune disease and we can work with that accordingly. Next is thyroid resistance. This is when the tests all come back normal, but you're still experiencing hypothyroid symptoms. When we have increased cortisol in our system due to stress, what that does, it decreases the receptor sites. Again, the tests are normal. This is when you have increased inflammation, increased cortisol levels, or what's happening is that you're not absorbing the vitamin A. Something is wrong with the bile produced in your gallbladder, or maybe you don't have a gallbladder. So what's happening is that you're decreasing the absorption of vitamin A because vitamin A, D, E, and K are all fat-soluble vitamins, and we need bile produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, when we take in food to help break down fats and absorb fat-soluble vitamins. So you could be having decreased vitamin A. Or you could, have, you could have inflammation in the gut and increased homocysteine levels. Those are just indicators where the thyroid tests are come back normal, but you're, st you're still experiencing hypothyroid symptoms due to thyroid resistance. Last is, is number six, thyroid bonding globulin elevation. Now the thyroid bonding globulin, it's a protein. We call it, it's a taxicab that transports the thyroid hormone throughout the body. However, that's the same taxicab that's utilized by estrogen. So for a female who's taken birth control pills, What's happening is that they're going to have too much thyroid bonding globulin hormone, uh, hormone, so they're experiencing decreased thyroid function. Or what's going to happen is that they're going to have PCOS, that's polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease. And what's happening, they're going to have a decreased bonding globulin hormones. So what's going to happen is that they're going to have elevated too much, too much active T3 throughout their system. So these are just six patterns I look at in my office. If this sounds like you, please give me a call for your free consultation. 653, Eric code 630-653-2225. Visit my website, www.totalhealthypage.com. And thanks for watching.